Wrestling fans, listen up. This is Effie from, you know, wrestling and the internet. It's CBV, Chris Van Vliet. It's Aubrey Edwards, referee at All Elite Wrestling. This is Old Mancer, the Southern Psycho, king of the trailer court. I poke God. It's the God of shit, Nick fucking Gage. Swoggle here, and this is the episode we've been waiting for. You're tuned in to Action Figure Weekly with Dylan Housen and Jerry Dan. So check out the podcast, AFW Podcast. Hello, figure fans. Welcome back to another exciting edition of Action Figure Wrestling. This week, Action Figure Weekly, we are having a special, special episode. We are going over the history of Major Bendy's. Now, you may be thinking, why are we doing the history of a line that has only been out for a year? Well, in that one year, uh, Major Bendy's has already released 30 figures. It's a lot to go over. Uh, I know a lot of people are getting interested into it, you know, more and more. So, as a completist and an enthusiast of the line, I had this idea, like, why don't we go over and we cover everything that's here and have this as a resource and a tool for people who are getting into the line where they can come in and look at it and kind of, you know, we can answer some questions and stuff. Uh, I will say up front, I am a fan of the line, and I think I know quite a bit about the line, but I will not know as much as Matt Cardona, Brian Myers, or uh, Canik. You know, those three are the owners and operators and creators of the line. Uh, my eternal gratitude for them for giving us uh, such a fun thing as a fan. Uh, and I, I'm ready to get into it. I'm, I'm hopped now that we've made the man. introduction of what we're doing. It. I am Jerry Damage Cook. He is my co-host, Dylan Housen, Dylan Gilbert, the Deathmatch Brewmaster. And we have a lot of figures to cover. Yeah, we do. <laughs> a lot of figures to cover. So, but first, I think we need to do a quick introduction on what Bendy's are. Okay, so Bendy's spawned out of a uh, love of the Bendums line, the WWF Bendums line that uh, all the guys all had. They were very nostalgic for them. And then the opportunity came to create these figures. And they announced it at, I believe it was San Diego Comic Con 2021, is when the line first got announced, or sometime soon after that. Um, so this is, I'm going to put up some. This is, I have series one. So we're going to put up just Razor Ramon, just so you can kind of see the scale of it. So this is a uh, WF Bendham, Razor Ramon. You see that scale. Series one, I think, scaled very, very well. Uh, the problem that that line suffered from is over time, it did not scale well at all. This is X-Pac. Now, X-Pac is uh, smaller than Razor, but he's not that much littler, and uh, it just keeps going down from there as the series go on. So, um, one thing that Major Bendy's has done very well is they have scaled it to Series 1 and then kept it in that scale all throughout the line. So that's perfect. Uh, that's one thing I'll enjoy about the line. Everybody's in scale. There are no issues with, uh, you know, all of a sudden Matt is, you know, as big as Razor here. I'll, I'll show you here in just a second at that. Uh, and then all of a sudden, you know, Jeff Jarrett is then three times smaller than Matt in the next series. You know, there's no, no scaling issues with that now. Uh, they have changed, I believe, I think the very last Bendy for this one for this year that we're going to cover today is by a new sculptor that they had. So all these are from the original sculptor. So there are a little bit differences I've already noticed um, between the last of last year and beginning of this year. Those sculpts are a little bit more improved, a little bit more detailed. Um, we'll get into those next year. So kind of start covering that, but let's go ahead and kick into it. So this is Razor from Series 1, WF Bendoms. And I just want to do a quick comparison here. We're going to set up Matt right next to him. Get Matt to stand up. 
you see pretty spot on scale wise very very similar scale between both of them and like I said uh, as you notice throughout the line uh, they have stayed perfectly in scale with each other nobody's really outside of um, Tyrus which we'll get to later on everybody's pretty much in the same scale and things so it's all very very well done from that respect so so let's go ahead and kick off series one so series one announced at San Diego Comic Con 2021 I uh, took just didn't really take that long to produce because they were out by Christmas 2021 so December 2021 that's the kickoff for series one and that's why I decided for the um, ending point for year one to be December 2022 now Full disclosure, <laughs> we are already in January 2023 when we're recording this, and there have already been another 11 figures <laughs> that have dropped for, six, for, for year around. two. Uh, we have 30 figures to cover for year one. Year two is going to have probably a lot more. Um, the guys have figured out this business model, and they are running with it. And like I said, as a fan of it, I'm hot and excited for it. So let's kick off Series 1. We'll kick off with you know, the... Indie God, Matthew Cardona. Uh, you see him here in his always ready gear. Very, very cool. Pops quite a bit. See here the back of him. You see the signature on the back. Uh, that was a staple on all the bendies. Bendems. You see Razor has it there on his back. And so Matt has it there on that. He's got the always ready. It's got those cool Matt Cardona designs. Very, very good looking figure. Now, one of the cool things about that is that that's not the only Matt from Series 1. So, mid-production, they changed because that Matt was not tan enough. So... That tan's not going to work for me, brother. That tan did not work for him. So they changed to, let's, see, let's bring it back up here. So you see, this is the Series 1 mat. This, you can tell the difference there. This is the tan mat, is what they call it. Uh, it's also known as the Mellaway mat. Uh, the reason it's called the Mellaway mat is because it's not in the packaging, which we'll, we'll check out the packaging here in just a second for the for Matt and for all the figures. Um, but it did not come inside the packaging for it. Instead, what it came in was just in like a little baggie, which reminded everyone of the Hasbro Mellaways, like Hogan, mm -hmm. uh, Bret Hart, and Taker. And so, therefore, the nickname, the Mellaway Matt figure, got introduced in that respect. So, um, But you can definitely like, we bring it back up one more time. You can definitely tell the, the difference between the two. Uh, this one here has been given away a few times. I don't know if it was ever sold directly um, from the site and things, but it was definitely given out a few times. And I know as of this recording, there's another sale right now where you can get a uh, tan mat with a purchase of $30 or more uh, from the Major Bendy's website. So, now let's look at one other aspect. Um, everything comes with the original packaging now had a trading card in the middle of it that you could cut out. This packaging has that trading card on the same. Because remember, it is modeled after the Bendham's line. Um, but instead of having to destroy the packaging, you know, uh, Matt and Brian and Kanick are very, you know, they're collectors themselves. So they realize you don't want to be destroying all your mock stuff to get these cards. So they print off cards for everything. So here we have the Matt card from Series 1. You see that on the back. Information about Matt and the signature. Some of the cards are hard to find. very hard to find so now let's look at the packaging okay so the packaging will look just like this you have 
just a clamshell. <clears throat> like that for the figures. A little insert for them as they come in. And each one, of course, uh, different. When we get to the exclusives and start showing those off, uh, you'll see some of these designs. These are designed by uh, the very, very talented TTD. So let's check out the first we're going to look at. Matt Cardona, finish up his. You can see, of course, right here. There's a throwback back to the major bend or the WF Bendoms, where everybody had that design on them. And of course, here on the back, you see Series 1. So for the podcast, the Major Pod Network. And you see the card that we just showed right there on the back as well. So, that's Matt Cardona, Series 1. Now let's go ahead and knock out the rest of Series 1 with his tag team partner, Brian Myers. Tag team partner and hetero life mate. That's right. Tag team champion as well. You see Matt here, Brian here. And the orange gear on the back, you see him. He has the signature right here on the back as well. Here is the card for Brian, Series 1. See the back. And, of course, to conclude it, the packaging for Brian. <clears throat> Here you see that. You see the logo for Brian. And, of course, the back of it. Next up in Series 3, the producer for the Major Pod podcast. Smart Mark Sterling. You see him here in the red, white, and blue gear. This is what he uh, used. He wore in the main event for Dynamite against John Moxley. You see the Smart Mark logo right there on the, uh, the breastplate. On the back is all of his different, uh, you know, doctorates and everything that he's earned. Here is the signature right here on the shoulder. And this right here is not just printed on. That is actually raised. Like that's actually a uh, you know, engraved and stuff on it. Same thing here for the chest. So it's kind of cool. Very, very cool looking Smart Mark. Uh, here's the card. You know, Smart Mark in a signature pose. <clears throat> signature on the back for the Major Bendies. Smart Mark Sterling and the packaging. Let's look at that. Consistent with all the rest for Series 1. You see the Smart Mark right here. And, of course, the back. And, to round out Series 1, uh, you have to just stick with the figure 4, right? Right. So, we have Hornswoggle. Or Swoggle, I'm sorry, not Hornswoggle. Yeah, that's another guy. That's, that's copyrighted, man. We, we can't be That's a whole other that. dude. So here you see Swoggle. See there on the side, you see his logo. Swoggle on the butt. And, of course, the signature right here across his back. Um, you notice that there are no tattoos on this one because this is wave one. They really were kind of feeling out the tattoo process and stuff. So that he does not have any tattoos on this version. I say this version because I think in year two we're getting a repaint. And guess what? There will be tattoos on that one, so... Actually, I know we're getting a repaint because that one has already been ordered <laughs> as a pre-order. <laughs> uh, it's just waiting to come in. So I think it'll be in sometime this quarter. So there's that. And, of course, to round out the packaging. See that. And the back. So, so that's Series 1. Matt Cardona, Brian Myers, Smart Mark Sterling, and Swoggle. And then... Not too long after that, we moved into series. It's not okay. It's not series two, but it did come out after series one. It is the My World uh, Major Bendy set. So 
My world, of course, is the podcast between Jeff Jarrett and Conrad Thompson. Conrad Thompson is the uh, podfather who, you know, does the podcast with... <sighs> well, who doesn't he do a podcast with? <laughs> Let's, uh, I have to say, I think I just got a name. At this point, message. I think it's just easier probably to pick out who he's not doing a podcast with. Uh, but he started off doing the one with Bruce Pritchard, uh, something to wrestle. He does the one with Tony Schiavone. He does Jim Ross. He has now My World with Jeff Jarrett that was just launching. And to commemorate that launch, they did these figures. This figure line it commemorates of getting the first official figure of Conrad Thompson. Probably the only one. Maybe he can get a, a micro brawler at some point because uh, they do have some deals with PWTs. But until then, uh, this is Conrad's debut. It's a rookie figure. How about that? So you see that on the back. See Conrad here on the shoulder. You see the Conrad Thompson signature. And, of course, the card real quick. See Conrad and his jolly pose on the back. Conrad Thompson with the signature. And you'll notice also the packaging uh, for it. Let's grab the swag one because it's there on top. So here's the Conrad packaging. back you'll notice it is still the same this is early on in the design phase so you see they haven't really um, gotten to the the really really nice designs that he'll get to later on for some of these uh, exclusives and stuff you know they come across and also I want to point out uh, you see here on the side you see bendable posable collectible for each one and then you also see the my world logo major pod network and it's not a toy, guys. It's a collectible. It's not a toy. Uh, ages 18 and up. So, uh, all you little kids, so you got to wait a few years. Sorry about so, your damn luck. Sorry about your damn luck. So, now, moving on. We had not one, but two Jeff Jarrett's in this wave. Uh, the first one, because now when, there was a Jeff Jarrett in the Bendham's line, but it was the weird, like, after his first run, when he just came back briefly... <laughs> In his like weird Aztec gear before he really kind of got settled back in, so that it wasn't a good representation. So they were like, you know what, we missed on a good true Jeff Jarrett. So this is you know, this is like new gen era Jeff Jarrett. Uh, Be my baby tonight, Jeff Jarrett. See here in the blue, classic looking. I hope that one day we get a six inch figure of this. I think we are. Thank you, zombie. See the back. You see the signature right here. Everybody's got that signature on the back, remember? Mm -hmm. And, of course, here's the card. Ain't he great, folks? Ain't he great? And the signature on the back. So, And then when we look at the packaging, <clears throat> see everything there. You see up here, this is 95 Jeff Jarrett. And the back. That sweet double J hat. Sweet double J hat. Uh, which, it was not on the uh, Bendy, but it, the Micro Brawler did have that. I, I got to give them props on the Micro Brawler. At least they did have that. So then, of course, infamously or famously, however you want to look at it, uh, Jeff Jarrett leaves that run, goes to WCW for a bit, and then he eventually makes his way back to WWE after his WCW run. Uh, and he is quite a different look. And yes, folks, don't piss me off. Now, Love the reason it. that's included on this is because infamously, uh, the Jack's bone cruncher of this figure, we did get a, a one of this. You did use the same head as Owen Hart, but that's beside the point. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, infamously, instead of, you know, the catchphrase for the Attitude Era was don't piss me off. Well, it was don't make me mad uh, or something real close. To that. I think that's what it was. Don't make me mad. So, you know, obviously not quite the same as that, but uh, when they did this one for this era of Jeff Chair, you had to put that on there. I mean, come on, if you can uh, do that, correct that wrong that we suffered from 25 years ago. So here's the back. There's the autograph right here on the back. It's got those sunglasses. The only thing missing is the guitar uh, in order to hitch over the head with. So here's the card real quick as well for that. 
somewhere. I love the way they captured the the facial expression with the uh, oh, the and these and these cards are all designed by TTD, by the way. Yeah, TTD is just he just did hitting. the packaging and the cards for everything. So just hit. And of course, runs. the speaking of the packaging, let's finish up with this. So here is the Jeff Jarrett ninety-eight packaging. There's that. And the back. Of course, you also see right here. Collect them all, all three for the My World set of Conrad and both Jeff Jarrett's. So, so that's what's come out so far into the line. Now we get into Series 2. Okay. Series 2, uh, there's a few things that they wanted to do in this line. They wanted to give Bendy's two guys who, uh, you know, modern guys who could use one. Uh, so there's certainly a couple of that in way in series two, you know, and of course in series one, we got, you know, Mark, Matt, Brian, and Swaggle. Um, but then there's also, they wanted to go back in time a little bit and give us some guys like the Jeff Jarrett's that we did not get in the Bendham's line who we should have. So let's start off with this guy right here. He didn't get one. He should have series two, Brian Pillman, loose cannon, Brian Pillman. I would say this is probably right there. Maybe Attitude there. I mean, maybe ECW one even a little bit, knowing Brian. Mm. Um, that would not be shocked if that was the inspiration for this. So you see him there. Here's the back. Got that sweet uh, loose cannon cross there on him. You know, it's really right impressive here. detail the, on that one. Oh, it's very, yeah. Uh, now, as to not mess that up, they do have the. On his leg is where the uh, signature is on the back. Mm. So very cool on that one. Here's the card for Flying Brian. Loose cannon. Sorry. They they nailed the face on the card too. Uh Oh, it's TTD does such an amazing job on these. If you close your eyes and picture Brian Pillman, it's that face. Yeah. So let's look at the packaging real quick. You see here, you see what Major Bendy's. Remember now, in the original line, that's the way the packaging was too. It did not matter if it was Undertaker, Diesel, Shawn Michaels, Triple H, whoever it was. They always had that design with the Bendham's logo. Um, so, of course, in this packaging, they all carry on in that. And, of course, here's the back. You see Series 2, which we're getting to right now. So, let's go ahead and move on to the next one now. Now, remember... We're going through some old guys in every wave, and then we're going through some new guys too. So, <laughs> and <coughs> excuse me, there is nobody better at making merch than this guy right here, king of merch. One of my favorite uh, guys to follow right now, Danhausen. It's very bendy, very uh, evil, very famous. You know this, very famous. That's right. So you see Danhausen here. He's got that. Uh, chest tattoo looking great. There's a logo on the side. Other side as well. Here's the back. Logo on the butt. And the signature's right here on the back. So, you gotta love, love that Danhausen. Of course, here's the card. I love the, the plotting hands. Yes. Now, this is a card that we'll see a few more times. But Okay, there's that. Let's look at the packaging real quick. There's that. You see the dead housing there. And back of the card. And let me point out, too, real quick. Uh, you'll notice that still consistent. Uh, the th- Look and feel the packaging is pretty consistent. It, uh, when we get to series, we're not going to cover it today, but uh, series three also keeps that same look. So, if you're a mainline series figure, that's the look right there is this um, you know, purple, like this kind of design and stuff. That's what everything's for. So, so with the next, not one, but two figures, we get the introduction of a chase figure in the line. Uh, until this point, we had not seen any kind of chase figures, but it's going to change. I mean, if you're collecting, the, the chase figure is a must uh, in any line. 
it just it makes it makes that thrill you know that thrill of the hunt more fun oh yeah yeah uh and these were randomly inserted into different orders and stuff um for series three the chase has changed a little bit where you can purchase it separately uh, but for these two figures you had to randomly um either luck into them in your order or you know buy them secondary market so so the first guy here is somebody who was supposed to have been in the Ben Domes line, but got cut. I think he left the company before he could get that figure out. So they took the original design and made Adam Bomb. You see him here with the glasses on. This is the exact, you see there on the side, you see the like, mushroom clown on the side too. And of course here in the back. Sweet logo, signatures here on the shoulder, and this atom bomb is what we thought we were supposed to get. Now, during the design process, they found it surfaced um, some other atom bomb, and maybe that that's not the one, or they had plans for a couple different outfits. So this was the unreleased other atom bomb. See that. Same sculpt and everything, so you see the same signature on the shoulder. And this one right here is the Chase. This is the regular. Uh, both have the same card. No different there. See that intense look there on Atom Bomb? Is it just me, or does the Chase look like it's just a touch taller and the head shaped a little differently? Um... Is that could that just be camera angle? No, or I think I, it's just the I... camera angle where I'm set because I'm looking at them like dead on and they're, they're the okay. same. Yeah, it's the same sculpt every, every way. They're not. It's not. That's a, what I thought. It just it looked different on my screen, so I wanted to make sure we weren't about to just uncover some real history here. No, 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 no. It's the same. Yeah, same sculpt and everything. So it's just the way that I think this one's forward a little bit more in the camera angle. So I got you. Um. But yeah, so this is the Chase figure. Now let's look at the Chase. Let's look at the regular packaging and then the Chase packaging. So so the regular packaging, here we go. Of course you see the Bendy's logo on the back. See, series 2. And the only difference for the Chase packaging, you see this lovely Chase, major Chase uh, logo sticker right there on it. So, like I said, now there is <laughs> not one. There are two chases in this. I'm just not going to display. It's the it's recording on the fly, folks. What are you going to do? Gives me an excuse for another one of my many uh, Kevin Dunn camera cuts. There you go. You're the Kevin Dunn of MEWF. Yeah. All right, there we go. Set that back up. That nice white background. So, this other man right here as well, the last figure in Series 2, he has a chase figure as well. So, let's go over the regular one. Here is the man, MDK, Hate Club, oh, oh, Nick Gage. Oh, fucking day. That's right. He comes with the signature bandana. He's got the pizza cutter. I mean, this is like, this is Nick Gage, you know? <laughs> If you wanted a four inch scale Nick Gage, here you go. On the back, Nick Gage. I I love that they chose the Hate Club Gage's shirt. Uh, yeah, because he he's got a couple different. You know, he'll either wear the MDK the or, right here on the bottom lower back. But I, I love that they chose the Hate Club shirt. So this is the regular Nick Gage. A little bit, so stand. There we go. And now let's look at the chase figure because the chase figure you're going to notice pretty quickly why it's the chase. He is bloody. Bloody Nick Gage is the chase figure. So uh, that's a very cool chase figure edition. You know, the Atom Bomb, uh, you had two designs that they'd found for the originals and made both of those. For this one, though, Nick Gage. You gotta have regular, and you gotta have bloody. Oh yeah, 
It, I if you watch she any Nick Gage back. match, he ends up looking like the Chase within minutes. Yep. So let's uh, look at the card real quick for it as well. Of course, EMDK flipping off. And Nick Cage, MDK. I love that he adds MDK to his signature, too. It's a nice it's... touch. So there's that. So that is... Well, let's look at the packaging real quick for it. There's that. Of course, the back. And, of course, the Chase with that sweet Chase sticker. And that concludes... Series 1, My World, and Series 2. And now we get to, as a collector, this is the fun part, as we like to call it. <laughs> the fun part. Because now you get into the exclusives, and there are varying numbers of these. Um, I'll be honest, I don't know the numbers behind them. I don't know how many there are of each of them. So um, I don't know if that information has actually been fully disclosed or not. Uh, maybe it has been. But if it is, I don't know it. So I'm not going to speculate on it. I'm just going to say more than one, less than a thousand. <laughs> you know, I, that's all I can guarantee. So let's start off with the ex, the first exclusive that came out. So until this point, we had those three series had dropped. And then we got what is a Pandora's box exclusive of Dan Hells. Dan Helsing came in for a signing. They had this special edition figure made for him. It's black and white Dan Helsing. You can see him there. Same uh, logos on the side and on the back as what we had for Series 2. It's just black and white. So this is now, what it would look like if Dan Helsing was an old wrestling. Yes. So now you look at the card... Let's look at the differences here. So this is the Series 2 card. This is the exclusive card. You see there, it's got the black and white thrown over it. It looks like on. a like a film gradient, maybe. Yeah. So you see on the back as well, uh, you can tell the, the differences on the card. So. <clears throat> and now this is where... <laughs> All the packaging for Series 1, My World, and uh, Series 2, you know, have that uniform kind of background and stuff. Now, this is where TTT got to really have some fun and actually design these packaging to make them all just look so, so sweet. So, look at this. Awesome looking packaging. You see the exclusive right here. Which actually, I think everything has the exclusive, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, no, the other ones say the series on them, so... But this one is designated now the exclusive. Uh, you see, of course, the bendable line. Then you see right here Pandora's box. So that tells you kind of where it came from. Major Pod Network. And, of course, not a toy. Ages 18 and up. But it's got that cool design right there on the back as well. And instead of um, right here in the middle, instead of... You know, all the different uh, figures in the line, it's all Dan Housen's right there. So, it's all the same one. Uh, that one was actually pretty hard to come by, I'm not going to lie. It was uh, <laughs> not an easy one to find. Uh, and certainly not, um, the card was even harder to find for that one. So, but, so that came out, and that's the first one. And then we had a limited drop. WrestleMania weekend. <clears throat> and if you're talking WrestleMania and you're talking Major Pod, there's only one thing that you can do, right? The Major Moment. So, this is from the Major Moment figures because they never got Mattel figures of these. They were supposed to. Um, and they got released before those ever saw the light of day. So, we could have the Matt Cardona from the Major Moment. In that Christian inspired gear. Now, this is also uh, same sculpt as Series 1. We're still major on the back. And the cool thing about this is 
this is not quite the same gear, obviously, that was Zack Ryder gear for uh, the major moment, but this is his Matt Cardona gear in that same style, and this is what he won the NWA title in. So that makes this figure kind of a two, two-fold figure, uh, and you know there were two special moments in that gear. And let's look at the... These were limited to 150 Here's the card on the back. And then let's look at the packaging real quick for that. So, again, it's exclusive. TTE, TTD gets to have some fun with it. You see that sweet logo, 150 And on the back, you know, we're going to notice... Um, the card on the back is not the same one that they used for the actual card release, but, you know, still fine. And, if you're having the major moment, can't have Matt without who? Without this guy. Brian. Brian in the Jets-inspired gear that Vincent Mann told him he couldn't use. <laughs> so... <laughs> Myers on the side. Very cool gear. Very cool to get these guys in this form. Uh, and if you're, you know, if you're talking to guys, I think that's one of the things that you have to kind of get. So here's the card for Brian. And let's look at the packaging real quick. <clears throat> so there you see that. And of course card is different from that on the back uh, the next one that we go to for the exclusives this and the, the exclusives are going to make up the bulk of it folks that's, oh, that's, yeah. that's all we have left but there are a lot of them we have uh, so we have the first one it was the smart mark is the next one the first one that he had for smart mark it was based on his main event against John Moxley on Dynamite. This one now is to commemorate his first pay-per-view appearance in AEW, where he teamed with Tony Nese to take on Hookhausen on pay-per-view. And this is the gear that Mark won. It dropped that night, and I ran for... I think the sale ran on the site for 48 hours, maybe? It was a uh, short time. It was a short time, maybe just, I, I don't think, one or two or three days. It was not very much, but here you see him in the uh, gold and silver. <clears throat> With those, you know, great silver hair right there in the back. There, signature on the shoulder. Same sculpt as he had in the other one. This is just a repaint, as I, all these are repaints of everything. Well, for the most part, but there's, there's a few exceptions we'll get to, but. So there's that. Here is the card for Series 1. Or, for, sorry, Series 1. For this exclusive. And, of course, let's look at the packaging for it. <clears throat> so here we have the packaging. Very sweet. Now this one actually does have the same card there on the back of it. And the next figure that we have is one that I think if <laughs> I think ben, Bendy's kind of had a uh, kind of a good following going until then, but this is one that I think really kind of got him a lot of attention on the line. So Conrad Thompson called up Matt and said, "Hey, I want to make a figure for Ric Flair's last match, which is happening in like two months." Can it be done? Uh, and Matt said, I don't think so, but I'll make a call. And so the uh, Bendy's are, they are pretty much two pieces uh, for the most part. Some of them might have an extra piece added in there and things. I think that some of the Series 3, um, the way that it was constructed and stuff had to be uh, into, you know, three pieces and stuff. But still, they're just a few pieces to produce. And because of that, there's no articulation. They're very pretty easy to, to make and things from that standpoint. So, especially once you get a, an initial sculpt done, it can be done within, 
you know, three months or so, give or take, from concept to, you know, release. And three to four months usually is what, you know, unless there's a hiccup somewhere along the line. But So this one right here ran very smoothly. Um, what's interesting is that this figure inspired what the wrestler wore, which is a, one of the few times that I don't know that's ever happened before, where the toy design is what <laughs> what inspired the actual gear that they came out on. Wow. Because they, this had to be done before that one, so... That might be one of a few times. So here is Ric Flair for Ric Flair's last match. Ric Flair in his robe. <clears throat> the interesting thing about these is when it first got released, um, there were 700, there's a thousand of them. 750 of them were signed and sold that night in at StarCast. Uh, the other 250 were sold, I think, by the guys. And uh, unsigned. So the one that I have is unsigned because I wanted mine loose. You see that? You see Nature Boy in the back. Signature's right here. And of course, here's the card. You see Ric Flair's last match right there. <clears throat> Sweet signature on the back. And let's look at the packaging because there is something very unique about the packaging here on this. <clears throat> so, you see right here, Jim Crockett Promotions. This is the only figure ever actually to have Jim Crockett Promotions uh, on the packaging and be actually <laughs> endorsed by Jim Crockett Promotions. So, so it's pretty cool. You see, of course, down here, Rick Flair's last match. Nature Boy. And the card, everything on the back. So, very, very cool packaging. Um, because the bulk of them are signed, it is a more uh, more pricey one, just because the initial charge was, I think, $200 for it signed. So, you know, it uh, definitely is one of the pricier ones from that standpoint, because it's the signed ones, of course, vastly outweigh the unsigned. So, right. So that was Ric Flair, and of course he is not in one of the other series, he's a single release like that. Uh, the next guy came out, and he was released by WE, wanted to kind of go do his own thing for a little bit, and started a family and things during that time too, so he took off a little bit of time to kind of do both of those things. And the guys called him up and took advantage of that, and <laughs> he, was not, he was not released for too terribly long time. But he has, like, several action figures coming out from his different uh, companies that he signed and made deals with while he was gone. The first, this is actually produced by MajorPod. Uh, actually, by this. There's a couple more exclusives that we'll show here in a second for this person as well. It is <clears throat> Johnny Gargano. Johnny Bendy, that's what we're going to call him. So, Johnny is a huge comic book fan. Uh, and, of course, in NXT, if anybody watched any of the TakeOver and the uh, legendary matches that he had, he always came out in some kind of comic book-inspired gear. Um, and so all these, he has three of these total, and all three are in different comic book-inspired gear. Uh, he joked with Mattel that he should get an ultimate in, like, his combo gear that has, like, all the different characters and stuff on it, which would be just amazing if he was able to do that and pull that off. Oh, yeah. So this right here has, you see he signed right here on the gear on the shoulder. This is Carnage inspired gear. Johnny Wrestling on the back. The signature is right here on the sculpt. And here's the card. In the back. So very, very cool. This is the actual one that... Uh, as part of the major pod line. Look at the packaging, because remember this is exclusive, so therefore <laughs> TTD was able to have some fun with it. You see that? Con the Carnage inspired uh, you know, you know, design on stuff on this one. <clears throat> it's very cool. It's he has TTD that one. hitting home runs, man. He is. He is just killing it. 
So you have Carnage, and then after Carnage, we go through the next exclusive. This is a Johnny Takeover variant. And this is from WrestleCollectorShop.com. This is the Punisher variant. See that on the back. Of course, signature out there. Same sculpt as the other, just a different paint. Here's the card. You can see right here in the corner of the card, uh, most of the exclusives have that. Not 100% of them do, but usually it's a different. Uh, it is a different card that they release with it, and it at least has that on the. Kind of like that. And then, of course, this is the Punisher inspired, so let's check out that packaging. You see that? You see the bullet holes right here. You know, on the back, you see Johnny Takeover. Very sweet. And you see right here uh, the Wrestle Collector Shop logo. So that is two, and now there is one more Johnny Gargano that we got released. Now, he is back with WWE uh, at this point, but they got three into the line uh, in all relatively quick succession. So this is the Venom slash Carnage uh, logo, or, you know, inspired gear. Of course, there's the back, Johnny Wrestling. Here is the card. This is a Pandora's Box uh, exclusive. Pandora's Box, of course, they did have that first Dan in the black and white one. So this is the second exclusive that they've had. And you see the Pandora's Box logo right there. Mm -hmm. On the card. And then we look at the packaging real quick. <clears throat> and you see the cool thing is uh, this is, you know, Venom inspired and stuff. So you have the symbiote, you know, kind of like going across and stuff like that and taking over the packaging. Uh, of course, you do see right here the Pandora's box logo. In the back, you see the Venom eyes. Looking at you. So, very cool. Um, like I said, all three different comic book characters inspired. And, you know, uh, he is a comic book kind of guy. So, you know, that's what his gear mostly consists of. So it stays true to character. He, he always has had the most toyetic gear. I mean, through his NXT and WWE runs. Oh, yeah. 100%. Um, so the next two exclusives that we get are whatnot exclusives. So the way that it worked is um, the guys sold just a few on whatnot every week until they were gone. Um, I don't know the numbers on them, but I know it was not very high either. Um, you know, all these exclusives are repaints. They all use the initial sculpts uh, for these kind of same guys. So <clears throat> you can do a lower run. Uh, I think your initial run on them has to be a thousand. Um, but after the thousand, you can do different variations and stuff. You know, I know at least 150 for the major uh, moment. Um, Beyond that, I really don't know. Like I said, you know, I'm I'm a fan. I'm not involved in the business meetings and stuff, so I don't know, uh, you know, the specifics on that kind of stuff. But I just know kind of some stuff. Like I said, you know, we're, we're going to tell you all as much as we can verify, and then you know, there are parts that we can't. So This is not an so, official history. This is just a tribute. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So this right here is Major Players, Matt Cardona. Get that lights not want to pick up the. It's actually a purple, but the lights want to shadow it. It's not picking up the purple too well. But there we go. Can I see it right there? Yeah, there so it this is. is major players. Uh, and during their impact run, they are the major players. They have reformed the tag team at this point. And so we see that. Of course, this is the same right there. Uh, this is this is a, a tan map. Remember, right? The, Let's just, I just want to show this off because remember this is the series one and that is the major players one it kept that same tan as what the mail away uh, you know Matt had the re, you know updated one so so this one is actually 
more of the rare one. The Series 1 is actually kind of a rare one and stuff just because um, I don't know the numbers on it. I've never heard the numbers on how much is there and stuff. But So, let's look at the card real quick for it. Another Kevin Dunn cut, sorry. It's all right. There's the back. And, of course, you see on the card, you see the WhatNot logo. Right on it. And let's look at the packaging. Remember, it is an exclusive. TTD gets to have some fun with it. You see those cool flames right there on it. You see the WhatNot logo. And there's the design. So, that's one of the releases. The other one, of course, is the his tag team partner for the major players, Brian Myers. See, you got those sweet flames right here on the pants and everything. On the back. Got the same, you know, this is the same sculpt as what we had in Series 1 and everything. Yeah, let's look at the card real quick. And the back. And the packaging. We'll check that out as well. <clears throat> There's that for Brian. And the back, and of course. Collect them all, both major players in this line. Or in this you know, set of exclusives. So, next we have... <laughs> we're not done, folks. <laughs> There's still not more exclusives that have come out. They have uh, figured out a formula, man, and it is working. I, they, they pretty much have a license to print money at this point. <laughs> I, so, I mean, I, I, I have a few of these. I'm getting itchy for these figures. If you see me looking down, I'm actually perusing Major Pod merch right now. <laughs> yeah. So, the next uh, two exclusives are for High Spots. So, High Spots ordered these. Now, the first one up is Danhausen. Same sculpt as before. He's got that you know, chest hat. See here on the side. And of course the logo there on the butt. <clears throat> and here is the card. Now this is the same card almost as uh, series two. The difference is that high spots logo. And let's look at the packaging real quick on it. See the high spots logo here on the side. Yeah, the back of it. And he did come with one other person in this series as well. And it is MDK All Day, Nick F. Engage. He comes in the uh, MDK All Day shirt, <clears throat> MDK shorts, Eastern block on the back of the shirt. Gang affiliated. That's right. Now, the interesting thing on the card for this one is that it does not have that High Spots logo on it. But when you compare it to the Series 2 card, it is darker print. Um, I got this from Canic directly, so that's why I'm sure this is what it is. Um, I assume. I mean, if it comes straight from the guy who makes it, I'm going to go with it. So. And I studied both cards because I was like, did I just get a Series 2 card? And I looked at them and I was like, it is darker. And I looked, then uh, the kicker for it that sold me on this being the actual card is that the Danhausen High Spots card has the same dark print. You see that right there on the... So, <clears throat> that's why I think this one is. this The uh, card is the same as a Series 2 card, just darker. Darker print and everything, so... Let's check out that cool packaging for Nick Gage. MDK all day. And 
You know what? Let's uh, let's stay with Danhausen for a bit. How about that? You you can stay with him for a bit. He's uh he's got a few. Yeah. So this is the. It is based on. I think it's actually based on like Jack Kirby, nineteen um, seventies comic book art. Is kind of what this is inspired by, you know, like Silver Surfer kind of kind of art and stuff that Jack Kirby drew. Um, it is yellow. Dan Housen does love The Simpsons, so some people thought it was a Simpsons inspired, and maybe there's a little bit to that, but I think officially it's based on the comic book kind of Dan Housen. So, and of course, the different skin color and everything. There's the logo on the side, on the butt, and on the side again. Same sculpt as all the others, so there's the signature right there on the back. Now, this card is all the others, you know, had seen, um, had been this right here yellow until this one this is the only one that's not like that here's the card look at that that's where i say it's a silver surfer inspired is him writing the silver surfer board uh dan Housen is a you know comic book fan he has posted similar artwork in the <clears throat> past which makes yes. me really believe that that is him making a bendy of that artwork yeah uh, the artwork i think is like it's probably one of the cooler cards oh yeah. maybe the coolest card in the, in the actual series so <laughs> Look that at the is, packaging real quick. That's the second See that. I this ever is bought. that uh, Jack Kirby inspired kind of energy and stuff there on it. And on the back, cool Dan Housen logo. And that is the last one so far. No, he's. <laughs> uh, we'll see him next year in, in year two because there is a. Actually, in the first day of year two, he had an exclusive. That, you know, went up for yeah. order. So uh, he did not, they did not miss a day with Dan Housen. Nearly New Year's, New Year's Eve or New Year's Day, there was one on sale. So, so, um, but let's, that's the last one for year one. So now let's move on to the last Matt and Brian for year one. Now these two are, they call them merch table exclusive. So the only way to get these is if you go to, uh, convention or an indie show that the guys are at, you know, in a booking somewhere, si signing or something like that, and they have some on, available on their uh, table. That's the only way to get them is that way. Uh, you cannot get these on, you know, majorpodmerch.com or anything like that. That's not where they're being sold. Only if you go to an event with the guys and see them there, uh, or if you aren't able to make them and you know somebody who is going, maybe you can talk to that major mark and they can pick one up for you. So. So, first one, let's look at the mat in this. So here is the mat. This is the Deathmatch King inspired gear. Uh, inspired, of course, by Macho Man. That was the gear he wore at, I believe it was Art of War Games. Yeah. Deathmatch King on the back. Instead of Macho King, it is Deathmatch King. Uh, here's the card for that now look look at the card yes that sweet card that with, was, with the major crown on and everything that was art of war games when he lost the uh lost the title i believe yeah to moxley john moxley <clears throat> moxley's in a moxley. slayer shirt he's in a slayer shirt so let's look at the cool packaging that's a really sweet package <clears throat> deathmatch king on the mac And so that was the mat. Now let's look at the Brian merch table exclusive. This Brian, his black and white gear. Uh, the beard is a little bit different shade on this one. Mm -hmm. A little bit lighter shade and stuff than what the others have been. So there's that. And let's look at the card. <clears throat> And check out the packaging real quick for it. <clears throat> black and white packaging. All the logos are black and white on it. That's one cool thing. Instead of being that, it's the most professional wrestler, Brad Myers. And 
that leaves us with one more to go. Now, this is one. It's exclusive that they sold for two weeks through MajorPodMerch.com. And it's the best-selling Bendy of all time. So much so that it's it's such a high number. I, I don't know what the number is. I just know that they have said that it blows every other one out of the water as far as pre-orders and stuff made. So uh, He is a regular contributor on Fox News, and he would pimp it out every time he went out onto the show, order his you know like action figure here, uh, and <laughs> they sold a bunch, man, apparently. So here he is, <laughs> Tyrus. Now, he is much larger than all the others. Um, this is the first one I, I mentioned early on in the show. All those are made by the original sculptor. He's the first one for the new sculptor. So you start to see slightly uh, more detail in stuff in these. And then as we go into the next, uh, when we, you know, next year when I cover the next ones, uh, we've already got some of those in. And you can already start to see a difference in the... Um, in the detail in the sculpts and stuff like that with the new one. So you can, I, I want to say, be like, I ah, know you couldn't, but you can, you can tell the difference. Uh, not saying the originals are bad. All those out there, I love them. I mean, obviously I've got them all, <laughs> you know, I wouldn't if I didn't. Uh, but I think you can just tell us something. So as this line continues this year, I'm going to be very excited. Um, let's go ahead and check out. Let me show you. Let's just grab. Dan Ailes for comparison. So you see the, he is much larger, not much larger, but I mean, he is definitely, <laughs> definitely wider and taller because Tyrus is a big guy. So uh, I believe this is the gear that he wore when he won the NWA belt, I believe. Maybe wrong, but there's some more tats on the side, on the back, uh, the low, the signatures right here on the side of his stuff to not mess up the logo and more hats on the side so let's look at his card real quick <clears throat> see that and signature and let's look at the packaging real quick for the best-selling bendy of all time i'm a little disappointed there's no uh as tyrus seen on fox there's no what <laughs> as seen on fox news <laughs> yeah well, then you have to pay Fox and stuff. So. Uh, that's true. And I'm sure that, that would not be cheap. Now. I'm sure it wouldn't be. The only other thing I wanted to uh, bring up for year one. Um, there are some stickers and stuff like that for for it. But they weren't really um, widely you know, given out and stuff. I think the guys kind of did those as kind of a promo thing before the line launched. But for cards, there are two exclusive cards that you can get for this. So this one, uh, if you ordered a loose bendy, you could get this one. So there was a promotion going on. If you ordered a loose bendy, you got this major players holographic card. Which is very cool. Of course, look at the back. It has both autos on it. Like I, said, I think the promotion at the time was if you bought a loose, there are some loose ones that come in uh, from time to time. Maybe the packaging is, you know, damaged or something like that, and he sells them loose. Uh, those are $10, 15 depending on if there's a sale going on or not. And the original promotion was if you bought one of those, um, you do you got that card. I got a loose Brian Pillman in order to get that. The second one, and this one's actually kind of hard to get. <laughs> it took me several tries to get it. It is hashtag Major Bendies. So if you go on to Twitter and you uh, share a cool pic of your collection or you know some kind of picture that pops the guys and stuff and they retweet it and they pick your picture for the week, you have to use hashtag Major Bendies on the... And if they use it, then this is what they have. get this exclusive card all three guys the triple auto 
triple auto. One of the rare triple autos. That's right. So, so that concludes year one. It is very, very cool. I uh, love the line. Huge fan of the line. And I, you know, just cannot be more and more enthused about uh, about where the line is going to go into year two. So, so as for year one, um, it is just uh, so much fun, man. I mean, it's they're not action figures, but they look great when you put them on a shelf and have them all lined up together and stuff. I mean, and, and you're getting guys who, you know. In year one, we got Nick Gage and Dan House. Uh, yeah. Year two, <laughs> let's just year. I'm just going to rattle off the names for year two that we have and what kind of what we got coming. Uh, we had thirty, so we covered thirty figures right there. Okay, yeah, that's a lot so far for year two. This is a preview for the next video in a year when I cover this series three. We have Chelsea Green. Effie, Colt Cabana, Gangrel, Chase Bloody Gangrel. We have coming FWF3 Matt, FWF3 Brian Myers, Hot Mess Chelsea Green, Swoggle with the Tattoos, uh, Ghostbuster Inspired Gear Matt, Mets Inspired Gear Brian Myers. <laughs> uh, I believe it's Series 4, British Bulldog, Joey Janela, uh, Anderson and Gallows, Ricky Morton. There's the New Year's Evil Danhausen coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a Live 15 inspired Smart Mark that just came out. And... We also know that they've already announced the Kiss Demon and Tommy Dreamer coming out at some point this year. And that's probably just going to be through like March or April. So, I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, I do want to point out this right here, too. This is on the last page of the calendar was a checklist. Uh, they go, every year, the Major Pod puts out a calendar. The very last page of it was a checklist. I printed off a copy of mine. And if you'll bring it me here real quick, Dylan. Yep, sure thing. Yep. I'm actually yes. looking at Major Bendy's as we speak. <laughs> you've, you've done So this is job. the page that I printed off. You see where I use it as my checklist, and I checked off everything. Um, the only one, let's look at this guy right here. You see this guy? This guy right here. That is a bloody Ric Flair. Ric Flair, of course, in his last match. He did get busted open, so they wanted to do a bloody variant. But uh, it did not happen. And as of right now, who knows? Maybe this year it will get, uh, it'll come out, you know. But as of right now, I think it was scrapped officially. So it's the only one here on here that we know is not going to come out is Bloody Ric Flair. But that's, that's so sad. It is. Because I, I would have liked that one. I thought it would been cool. But. So that is the history of year one major bendies uh hopefully you guys could check out and see all the differences all the cool ones all the exclusives uh, all the trading cards with everything all the unique packaging that they have uh, hopefully if you had any questions about it maybe we answered a few questions and stuff for it and as always facts are optional um, i think i was pretty accurate for the most part but you know if there is anything that we got incorrect uh, drop us a comment dm us you know, let us know, because uh, I want to know for my own information and stuff if I got something incorrect. So, uh, like I said, you know, we are fans. We are not the creators of the line, but uh, it's something we have a lot of fun with. So, yeah, you know, it's yeah. definitely something that I uh, got in on and decided, you know what, these are very cool. Uh, they are representation of a lot of stuff that I'm a fan of, and that's kind of why I decided to go uh, all in and be a completist for it. Uh, Matt has said officially he does not want everybody to be a completist just because they're pumping out so many of these <laughs> that uh, it is no small feat to to be a completist on them. Uh, 
you know, pick and choose. And that's the, that's the brilliant thing. If you just like the Danhausen, you're a huge fan of him, you can just collect the Danhausens. If you're a MDK all day kind of guy, uh, you can get the Nick Gages. You can get that Effie if you love GCW. You know, if you I old school guy, you can get here. Ric Flair and Ricky Morton coming out. You know, it's um, there's something for everybody. If you're a fan of the original line, you know, you can go back and get Adam Baum and Brian Pillman and those Jeff Jarrett's, and they fit right in with those original bendies as we showed off at the beginning. Uh, they are right there in scale with the original line. And, you know, uh, hats off to, you know, Matt Cardona, Brian Myers, and Kanick. Uh, you guys have created something that I, I hope uh, we see for years to come. And, you know, hopefully in years to come, I'm still complete on it. But we'll see how hard some of these are to obtain. Yeah. Maybe at some point I'll be like, ah, couldn't get that one. But, you know, uh, as of right now, I'm, I'm still 100%. So. so, thank you guys Major for watching. Bender. Major Bender, yeah. Major Bendy. So, so thanks everybody for watching. Signing off, I'm Jerry Damage Cook. He's Dylan Housen saying see you next time.